Hi. Good morning, my dear friends. It's so wonderful to welcome you this morning. And wasn't yesterday absolutely wonderful? The, when the weather is like that, I don't think anybody can be in a bad mood. It was absolutely perfect. And it lifts all of our spirits. Uh, um, something else that we do from time to time, haven't done it in a long time, but we do do it. And I think it also helps lift the spirits for the day. So I would like us to do that again this morning. And that is, I, if you're sitting with someone, I want you to look them in the eye. If you're all alone, then find someone on the screen to look at. Pastor, if you could uh, do the big screen share. So, so uh, I'll, 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 I'll take about it. I'll stop sharing for a moment. Here we go. There you go. Okay. So find somebody to look at. And those of you who don't have your video on, we would like to see you if possible. And we understand if we can. But anyway, look each other in the eye. And the first person needs to say to the second person, you are a beloved child of God. Now, I want the second person to say to the first person, you are a beloved child of God. And that's usually where we stop it. But um, I want to add a special request. We're going through a real hard time right now. And that's understandable. And we might sometimes feel a little lost. Um, so I'd like you for the month of February, when you get up in the morning, look yourself in the mirror and repeat those words to yourself so that you can always remember who you are and that God is there with you, even if you feel all alone. After we've done it every day for a month, you may well have con convinced yourself that is true. And then you might want to continue doing it every day, but the point is there you're getting that message from the Lord and yourself and your friends and family. So try it out, okay? Um, Pastor, we would like to see the video, the uh, Reconciling in Christ video now. Hi, I'm Christine Radford, and I'd like to read our Community of Christ Church welcome statement, and my preferred pronouns are she, her, hers. Community of Christ Church is an open and affirming Christian community who lives in God's love and grace. We strive to welcome and include all people because we believe God loves and welcomes all people, and we commit to work for racial justice in our church and the world. Regardless of race, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, expression, nationality, ethnicity, marital status, physical or mental ability, political stance or theological perspective, or anything else that might divide us, you are welcome here. What this means, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you are young or old, you are welcome. If you have brown skin, black skin, white skin, or any color of skin, you are welcome. If you are married or partnered or single or divorced, you are welcome. If you are gay, lesbian, bisexual, queer, asexual, aromantic, or straight, you are welcome. If you are male, female, transgender, intersex, or non-binary, you are welcome. If you cannot hear or see or speak, you are welcome. If you are sick or well, you are welcome. If you are happy or sad, you are welcome. If you are rich or poor, powerful or weak, you are welcome. If you believe in God some of the time or none of the time or all of the time, you are welcome. You are welcome here. Come with your gifts, your pain, your hope, your fears, Come with the traditions that have helped you and hurt you. Come with your experiences that have made you and broken you. Come with a mind ready to engage and a heart open to discern. Come and listen for the sacred spirit that calls you to love your neighbor wholeheartedly, seek justice, create peace, and practice compassion. You are welcome here.
All right, I'm going to ask you all to uh, stay muted and sing along with our worship team for our opening song, uh, Awesome is the Lord Most High. I now invite Violet to unmute and lead us in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Violet. I now invite Joe Hustad to unmute and uh, read our Hebrew Bible reading for today from Isaiah. A reading from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Did you not know? 
Have you not heard? Was it not told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? Yahweh sits above the vaulted roof of the world, and its inhabitants look like grasshoppers. God stretches out the skies like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent for mortals to live under. God reduces the privilege to nothing and throws the rulers of the earth into chaos. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root on earth than God blows on them and they wither, and a storm wind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom can you liken me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and ask yourself who made these stars, if not the one who drills them like an army, calling each by name, because God is so great in strength, so mighty in power, not a single one is missing. How can you say, tribe of Leah and Rachel and Jacob? My destiny is hidden from Yahweh. My rights are ignored by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Yahweh is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. This God does not faint or grow weary with a depth of understanding that is unsearchable. God gives strength to the weary and empowers the powerless. Young women may grow tired and weary. Young men may stumble and fall. But those who wait for Yahweh, excuse me, Yahweh, find a renewed power. They soar on eagles' wings. They run and don't get weary. They walk and never tire. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Joe. Our gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of Mark, picking up immediately after the text we had last week. Upon leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered Simon's and Andrew's house with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told Jesus about her. Jesus went over to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up, and the fever left her. Then she went about her work. After sunset, as evening drew on, they brought to Jesus all who were ill and possessed by demons. Everyone in the town crowded around the door. Jesus healed many who were sick with different diseases and cast out many demons. But Jesus would not permit the demons to speak because they knew who he was. Rising early the next morning, Jesus went off to a lonely place in the desert and prayed there. Simon and some companions managed to find Jesus and said to him, everybody is looking for you. Jesus said to them, let us move on to the neighboring villages so that I may proclaim the good news there also. That is what I have come to do. So Jesus went into their synagogues, proclaiming the good news and expelling demons throughout the whole of Galilee. This is God's good news for us today. Amen. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our friend and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this text is an immediate continuation of the story that Mark shares with us in uh, beginning with the 21st um, verse of the first chapter of Mark. Uh, it's sort of amazing when you think about it that we have uh, been in the first chapter for a while now um, because Mark packs so much into uh, into this chapter. Um, Mark packs a lot into the whole very short gospel that the gospel of Mark is. 
So to remind you, uh, last week we heard about Jesus and his disciples coming to Capernaum and on the Sabbath going into the synagogue and being invited to teach and to speak to the people. And people were spellbound by what he had to say. Um, he spoke with such authority that they weren't used to. And then he was challenged by uh, a person who uh, entered the synagogue, um, sort of... Um, uh, startled everybody by immediately like appearing and shrieking out to Jesus. What do you want from us, Jesus? Have you not come to destroy? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus says, be quiet and come out of that person. And the, the demon, the unclean spirit obeys. So as Mark tells us, immediately upon leaving the synagogue, Jesus enters into Simon and Andrew's house, and there Simon's mother-in-law is sick. What's interesting about these two passages when put together is that we realize that Mark is taking us from the particular, the intimate, the close in with the person in the synagogue and um, Simon's mother-in-law in the house, and then brings us out in kind of a white. So if we were watching this as a movie, this would be, these, these are like close-up shots. And then now we are um, kind of coming back, uh, zooming out, if you will, uh, and seeing the bigger picture. And uh, we see that there are so many people who are sick, so many people who are possessed by demons and unclean spirits. It, uh, Mark tells us that everyone in the town crowded around the door. Uh, so we're getting this big picture from, again, from the particular, from the intimate, from the one-to-one -one relationships around healing and around casting out demons to this larger picture of so many people in need, so many people who are feeling the effects of illness and of demonic spirits in our world. And it's a lot. It is a lot. I had the opportunity to, uh, and some of you I know were there on Thursday, we had the opportunity to come to Aloha's Safe Rest Village to, um, to get a tour, to meet the staff, to, um, to kind of see what the pods look like, see what the facilities would be, learn more about the services that would be provided. I, for one, as a dog owner, was really pleased to see a dog kennel in the back of the of the area uh, so that the folks uh, with bigger dogs wouldn't have to always keep them in their pod with them, but could have a little bit more room for them uh, in an enclosed space. Just really lovely. And, uh, and then on Friday, they had an opening ceremonies um, where elected officials spoke and the press was there. And um, I just was so struck by the spirit of those of the people who got up and spoke because it was a spirit of gratitude for all of the collaboration, all of the work. It was a spirit of, um, of just celebration of what had been accomplished and, and, a, and a spirit of anticipation and joy looking forward. Uh, to the first residents of this, that uh, this would be, um, well, in the words of one of the uh, folks working on this project, said to Pastor Cannon and to the folks at Aloha United Methodist Church, uh, because you are looking outside your walls, because you are looking out into the community, because you are providing this space, you are saving lives. And it was a stark contrast because there were still some folks standing outside uh, the property with signs and shouting. And, um, and if you watched the news, I didn't look at all the news channels, but the one that I did see focused so much on the negative, on the negative attitudes about, um, about the perceptions of what it meant to be a houseless person that houselessness is equated with um, mental illness and addiction and crime, and just sort of putting uh, those people, lumping them into a category, right? That is uh, less than, uh, that is othering, uh, that makes it easier to dismiss them, 
to um, to decide that they're not worthy um, and to make it possible to not welcome them into this community. And I think about what's going on in our world all around us um, leading up to an election this year. Um, uh, the wars going on around us, the uh, the the divisions among uh, groups of people, of nationalities, of political ideologies, that is just so heartbreaking and feels overwhelming and feels like maybe it must have felt for the whole town to be gathered outside of the house where Jesus was. So much that needs to be healed. So much uh, demonic spirit in terms of uh, othering and hatred and fear and indifference that needs to be cast out. And how those demonic spirits make us human beings demonize one another. Um, the ways that houseless people are demonized as being criminals and addicts and, uh, and mentally ill. Uh, and 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 yes, those realities are part of the picture, absolutely. But we use those to demonize and to divide. But let's be honest. Um, I mean, I'm going to speak for myself. It's really easy for me to demonize the people who are speaking out against it. Mm -hmm. I can have my own opinions about about who who they are and what they're like and what they believe when I haven't even had a conversation with them, and and that's dangerous. And that is also demonic. It just is, people, and we all do it. We do it to one another. We do it to people that we don't know. We do it to the strangers. We do it to uh, immigrants. We do it to folks on the street. It, we do it across race, nationality, um, social, socioeconomic class, all of those things. We do that. Um, and so I appreciate that in this text, Jesus is taking time to um, to cast out those demonic spirits around him. And, and we know from the gospels that Jesus doesn't just cast them out and then leave this vacuum, this void. Jesus fills that space with divine message, divine spirit, love, compassion, forgiveness, reconciliation, stories that jar us into looking at our world and each other and our God differently uh, with more compassion, with more open heartedness. We're all going through a lot. Um, we were as just as we were um, getting ready to have these conversations, Michael was sharing with us about uh, the coming storms coming to Southern California and the amount of rain that's going to just disrupt folks' lives. Uh, the climate crisis is real and happening in real time all around us. The wars around us are happening and they are not just affecting the folks in those countries, they are affecting all of us as we look at our world with fear and anxiety. The housing crisis is real. The tendency for communities to turn their back on people who are different from them, whether it is about gender and sexuality or race or age or ethnicity or whatever it is, is real. And Jesus is present here with us and we are about that work. And then in the midst of that, this community, our community is also facing this transitional time where we had a wonderful discernment gathering, but there were also lots of emotions, lots of tears, uh, lots of uh, talking about our grief and our fears. So it just feels very much to me like what I must imagine Jesus felt in that house with the whole town around him with so much need so much that needs to be healed and cast out in our lives and in our world, in the very intimate and particular of our one-to-one -one relationships, as well as the broader picture of our communities, our neighborhoods, et cetera. So it is instructive to us to notice that Jesus' response to that is to pray that Jesus' response is to, to get away for a little while, 
to be alone, not to isolate himself from others as, I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, the tendency to, I mean, we had to isolate and then we got the tendency to just stay isolated. And that's a real thing in our community. But Jesus is not doing that. He's just taking time. He's taking a break. He's taking time in prayer and in conversation with God because we need that in the midst of this busyness and all that is coming at us and all that is within us and around us. We need to take time for prayer, for listening to God's voice. Jesus, uh, talks about prayer and prays quite a bit in the Gospels. But when you look at uh, uh, Jesus' prayers, we don't often get to hear what Jesus is actually praying. Sometimes we do. And when we do, it's things like Jesus praying for the faith of his disciples, praying that they have the strength and faith to go on, praying for forgiveness for those who have put him on the cross. Two uh, passages that talk about prayer, one that shows up a couple different Gospels, uh, 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 both of them show up in a couple different Gospels, are uh, one is about how Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. The, pray that we, the prayer that we are going to pray together here in a little while um, in our communion liturgy, the, what we call the Lord's Prayer. that your will, God, be done on earth as it is in heaven, that your will be done. Jesus' prayer is about the basics. Please, God, make sure we have enough to eat. Make sure that we have all that we need. And also, may your will be done in our world. And then I think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane as he is preparing to be taken away, to be arrested and tried and beaten and eventually hung on a cross, all for the crime of presenting, revealing to the world a different idea of who God is and of who gets to be included in God's love and grace, this radical inclusive message of God, of Jesus. And Jesus is in the garden and he, his very human side comes out and says, please, God, take me, take this away from me. I don't want this. It's too hard. It's a cup that I don't want to drink. But then Jesus says, not my will, but yours be done, O God. Mm. So this is an opportunity for us to think about how we take time in this very busy time. I don't know about you, but when I get busy, uh, I uh, sometimes my prayer life is, is one of the first things to get shortened, to kind of get put to the side. Um, we need to change those habits, don't we? We need to actually pray more. We need to take time to listen to God more. And yes, we have things to bring to God. Jesus brought things to God. But most of the time, what Jesus was really saying was, God, I'm listening. What do you want of me in this time? God, I may uh, things may not be going the way I want them to go. Things are hard right now, God. Um, but your will be done. That's really hard for us to do. We we want to sort of take control. We sort of want to use God as sort of a uh, uh, of a vending machine that like we put in the right uh, prayers into the little slot. We get what we want, um, <laughs> but sometimes we have to open ourselves up to what God wants for us in the very intimate and in particular of our lives, our our relationships, our families, ourselves. And in the big picture, our congregation, our denomination, our neighborhoods, our communities, our world. Mm -hmm. The disciples don't know quite to do with uh, don't know quite what to do with Jesus uh, taking off to go pray. They're they're confused and they're searching for him. And when they find him, it's almost like they're sort of scolding him. We've been looking all over for you. 
uh, Jesus doesn't really respond to that. He simply says, okay, let's get up. We got work to do. We got things to do. We have healing that needs to take place. We have casting out of demonic messages and voices and spirits. We need to cast out the tendency to divide, to belittle, to other, to dismiss, to ignore, to hate. My prayer for us in this time is that we take time in the midst of all that we're facing as a congregation and as people in this world, in this time and place, that we take time to listen to God's voice. I've had people ask me, is Christ Church a praying church? And I realize that sometimes when they ask that, what they're really saying is, does your church pray the way we do or the way I think you should? Uh, we may not pray the way other congregations pray. We have our own way, our own culture, our own group. But I trust that all of you are praying people. I trust that all of you are taking time to listen to God. And so I challenge you as I challenge myself to not... Uh, not shortchange that part of our practices and our lives, especially in this time. As we face uncertainty, as we face ambiguity, as we face all the things that just make us feel uncomfortable and unmoored, and we just want to, to know, please just tell me the path, and it's not always a, 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 a available to us, it's not always revealed to us. We used to talk about vision. What do we see five, 10 years down the road? Now we talk about horizon. What do we see just over, over the horizon for us? What is God revealing to us? Well, maybe we need to take more time to listen, mm -hmm. to take time in prayer so that we understand what God is up to so that we let go of our own biases, our own prejudices, our own agenda of what we think it should be and let God teach us, let God guide us and let God equip us for the path forward for us because we have work to do proclaiming the good news and casting out the demonic in ourselves and in our world together. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with the sharing of God's peace with one another, and um, we're going to do that in breakout rooms. Uh, I have... Um, I don't have a video ready for you all, so if you stay in the worship space uh, with me, it's just going to be quiet. Uh, and that's fine too. Uh, but it, uh, and also, if you um, find yourself in a breakout room uh, by yourself, I will not leave you stranded. I will find another room for you to go into so that you're not alone. Uh, and I encourage you all to share the peace of Christ with each other. I encourage you all to check in and see how you all are doing during these very interesting and challenging times. So I say to all of you, the peace of Christ is with you. And also with you. I will see you back here in about 10 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. I now invite Violet Thetford to unmute and to lead us in the prayers of God's people. Let us pray. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Everlasting God, bring your healing power to the church. Give your church a spirit of unity and prayer, that we may discern your way for us in the world. This family of believers are at a crossroads in our journey together. Because of our fear and our grief, we often react with human tendencies to separate ourselves from each other. 
please share your wisdom and love so that we avoid bitterness and to accept that our experiences, our needs, and the way we worship may be different, but we are all of the same heart. Forgive us if we've been judgmental and help us to reach out with love and acceptance to all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Creator of the ends of the earth, you make the grass grow and send rain for the soil. Bring your creation into harmony and balance. Give your animals their food and provide a healthy shelter for your people. Inspire us to honor the miraculous beauty of all you have made. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, without equal, your steadfast love endures forever. Bring the leaders, elected officials, and peacekeepers of our towns and countries into understanding and unity. Guide them to serve with compassion and understanding. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God who strengthens us, you lift up with your hand to any who are suffering. Heal those who are brokenhearted and strengthen the weak and all in need. Please take a moment here, a minute here, to lift up the names of those people who you wish to have the sense of your comfort in their lives. Uh, my uh, son, Corey, who has uh, open heart surgery this week, and uh, his uh, family especially. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who gives power to the faint, challenge us to share the faith stories of what God has done in your own life. Open us to receive the unique ways God is at work in your people especially those whose perspectives challenge our own. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For what else do God's children pray? God, who calls each star by name, we remember all who have died. Shelter all who mourn with your mercy and care. And give us hope in your promised salvation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior. Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, thank you, Violet. Our worship continues now uh, with the sharing of our gifts and offerings, and uh, I'm dropping the uh, link to our giving chat, uh, giving button on in the chat, and invite you to stay uh, muted as you sing along with our worship team as we sing, One Thing Remains.
satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid One thing remains One thing remains Your love never fails, it never gives up Never runs out on me Never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. Your love. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as our Lord taught. Our Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. This is the body of Christ given for you.
This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. All right, we have a few announcements to share with you in our community news. I will share my screen once again. Okay. First, I want to remind you uh, about St. Matthew's Lutheran Church Food Pantry that we uh, are uh, helping uh, to uh, with our volunteer and our financial gifts and want you to know that the second and fourth Tuesdays are our night to bring two to four people from 4.45 to 6.15 p.m. The next uh, Tuesday for that will be uh, Tuesday, February 13th. Uh, so... Um, uh, you can access the link to that in our um, in our faith news. So I encourage you to to check that out and to participate. And if you haven't done it before, uh, folks will be there to show you what to do. And um, it's a good experience. So Creative Corner is back. Uh, I had to take a pause in January because of snow and ice and frigid temperatures. Uh, but this Saturday, February 10th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., Folks will be meeting at the Aloha United Methodist Church Social Hall. Setup begins around 9.30. And um, uh, Violet, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, briefly, I'd like to tell people that the, although it's three hours, um, many people can't come that long. So come and go as you please. This uh, Saturday, we want to focus on sh sh kind of a show and tell, if you will. So come willing to share what kind of... Um, what kind of creative things you like to do, uh, maybe bring some to show us. And if you don't have any hobbies in that in that area, just feel free to come and chat and learn from your fellow um, people, that your friends, bring your friends and your neighbors and your family. Uh, we just wanna have a real, um, we're trying to create a community of, of people that have a lot in common. So I hope to see you there. Thank you, Violet, yes. Um, all right, the next thing uh, in our faith news, uh, just reminding you, a week from today, we'll be uh, in person and on YouTube live stream in the uh, worship space, February 11th at 9 a.m. So mark your calendars for that if you are in town and are able to come, that would be great. But also the YouTube live stream link will be available in faith news on Thursday, so you can access it that way as well. And um, we've been kind of working on our tech to make it a little bit more um, uh, friendly and uh, accessible. So um, hopefully that will uh, continue to improve. Uh, also want to remind you that we are joining together with two other churches, the Lowell United Methodist Church here, but also Cedar Mill Christ United Methodist Church is inviting us, the, the three of us are inviting everyone to come worship at Christ United Methodist Church. And you see the address there. And also it's in Faith News for Ash Wednesday on February 14th at 6.30 p.m. Be a soup and bread supper. There'll be worship around round tables in their sanctuary. And um, uh, I spoke with Pastor uh, Paul Richards Kwan and Pastor Karen Rodriguez. And we're excited to bring these congregations together to begin our Lenten journey together on Ash Wednesday. So be sure to mark your calendars for that. This Wednesday, uh, February 7th at 6.30 p.m. is our council meeting on Zoom. And uh, I am dropping into the chat right now the Zoom link for that, because uh, forgot to put it in Faith News last week. So if you're interested, uh, at the discernment gathering on Sunday, we talked about, you know, questions for the council and what's next. So that will be part of our agenda and you're welcome to be a part of it if you would like. Um, Susie, anything to add? Um, if you let me share, I, I sent you an agenda, but I literally sent it this morning. So you probably haven't even looked at it. But if you let me share, I think I can share the agenda on screen. Oh, okay. Um, 
All right. I say that. I don't know that I can on my iPad. I'm not that skilled yet, but eh, maybe. Okay. Uh, we'll just take a, a brief moment to look at that. Um, if Oh, I need to stop sharing what I'm doing, don't I? There you go. <laughs> okay. As I mentioned, You're maybe working. not my, okay. my best skill here. Well, uh, we won't worry about it. So anyway, yeah. here's the agenda. Um, we will do our normal council business. We have some donation opportunities to maybe look at, and then we will be reviewing the discernment time and kind of going over um, the questions that came up and, and helping to guide a little bit the conversation that Inga, Pastor David, and I will have with Pastor Melissa on Friday, the 9th, to work on the agenda for the next discernment time. So um everybody's always welcome to council meetings that's not an issue we will just be on zoom um if you're part of that future planning task force and you want to join us fantastic you should do that if you don't want to join us also fantastic don't feel like don't feel obligated um so do as you know what what feels best for you um but just know that that will be the bulk of our time will be kind of reviewing what we heard at the discernment and going through that list of questions that we had at the end and sort of figuring out next next steps in terms of the next discussion time that we have at the end of the month. And and also our communication strategy moving forward. And our communication ready. strategy, for sure. Yeah. And then in the meantime, okay. if y'all can be doing the homework that you were given, the one-to-one -one yeah. conversation. You anticipated the slide. Sorry, Susie, I'm gonna interrupt you for just a second because I want you to put in your uh, save the date for Sunday, February 25th, uh, 10 a.m. after 9 a.m. worship, our second community discernment gathering. And then here it is. Here are the questions that we discussed and that you were given homework uh, to have coffee with two other people and talk about these things. What are we grieving? What are our fears? What do our grief and our fears tell us about what we hold dear in our hearts? So um, be sure to check that out. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but I just, I had a slide and I didn't tell you, so there you go. That's okay, that's all right. I'm glad you had a slide. Great. All right, uh, that uh, concludes our worship, except for our sending song. So I invite you to uh, stay muted and sing along with our worship team as we sing, go.
Go in peace, you are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Be to God.